this final will be one of the best in the history of the Leeds competition. Six outstanding pianists battle for a life-changing prize. The Leeds is a real open sesame to a concert career. Musical thoroughbreds pushed to the limit. It got to be something to shine. Only the most exceptional will win gold. How high in this Olympic year are we prepared to put the bar? Things are really hotting up here at the Leeds International Piano Competition and tonight we've another blistering concerto performance for you from one of our finalists. We also focus on the mechanical marvel that is the piano. This year's competition has seen 59 pianists perform more than 100 solo recitals. Just six of them got through to the final where they have to perform a concerto and we'll be hearing those throughout this series. The performances have been wildly different, but they do have one thing in common, this amazing instrument. It's the workhorse of the competition and some might say the real star of the show. With its moment in the spotlight fast approaching, the Leeds Town Hall piano is given its now traditional makeover by expert piano technician Ulrich Gerhards. The preparation of these pianos is not something that is done in a few hours. Very much like a sort of 50,000 mile service of a car, you take the whole thing apart. Do the housekeeping, i.e. clean everything, look at all the friction points. We actually listen to the sound of the piano and then make a plan what to do with the hammers, whether they need to be reshaped, whether they need to be softer, harder. What I've been doing today is to achieve a tone that is bright and percussive and cutting without being metallic and stringy. So we're really trying to get the most out of the piano. The main important thing it needs to do is to be loud enough to be heard because they can play a wonderful concerto if they can't be heard, it's no good. But at the same time, we want a musical tone. And we want also a piano that still projects in very, very soft playing. The main thing will be to keep the piano alive and to also give every player for their performance a very well-prepared piano. When you are a technician looking after whether it's a car or a piano and it's a high-quality product, what satisfies you is working with the materials and getting the result and then hearing the result. And that is, you know, why we're here. The Concert Grand is a spectacular instrument. It's capable of holding its own against an entire symphony orchestra. This really is the equivalent of a Ferrari. It's precision engineered, it's gorgeous to look at, and it can be very, very loud. Now, the piano has come a long way since it arrived on the scene back in the early 18th century. Then this was a genteel instrument designed for the well-heeled aristocrat or his accomplished young daughter to play. So how did those early prototypes evolve into the modern pianos we know today? London's Royal Academy of Music is home to hundreds of pianos in practice rooms, offices and concert spaces. Workhorses for the 700 musicians studying here. The Academy also houses a collection of historic keyboard instruments, the ideal place to come in search of the DNA of the modern piano. Resident keyboard expert Elena Vorotko introduces me first to the harpsichord. First of all, tell me, what is a harpsichord? What does it do? Well, harpsichord is basically a laid down flat harp with artificial nails, so to speak, little quills that pluck the string as they pass by it. Would you like to try? Yeah. It's a very odd sensation for yes. a pianist because I'm used to playing something and I can play really loud. That doesn't sound very loud. Or I can play really soft. 
it sounds exactly the same and I can't sort of get it to do what I want to do. Stepping forward from the 18th century harpsichord, the next stage in the development of the modern piano has a much more familiar sound to us in the 21st century. OK, Elena, well, we are we were 50 years on from the harpsichord that we were just playing. It already sounds softer, rounder, like you can have some more control over whether it's loud or soft. It's, it's a very different instrument, isn't it? That's right. This is a Viennese for the piano of 1815. Instead of a jack that plucks the string, you've got a little hammer. This is a forte piano, so a loud soft. Exactly. So this is the instrument that gives you all the control that you want. Almost. Allegedly. There is loud and soft, but it's not as obvious still as it is on the modern piano. Do you want to try? I'm going to try something. Let's see if we can do a little soft playing. There, I can do something and I can make it quieter. So that does feel very much more like the kind of instrument I'm used to. But it's got things added to it that make it more than just a simple piano. There is a bell over there. Not only a bell, there is also a drum. There's a drumstick inside the piano, which is operated by the very right pedal. And here is how it sounds like. That is the craziest and best piano I think I've ever heard. That is like, you know, the one man band, the guy with the cymbals and the drum on his head and playing the accordion. This is everything you would ever want in a musical instrument. It's crazy, uh, but it's not a modern piano. The great turning point for the piano came because one man in Vienna was losing his hearing. As Beethoven grew progressively more deaf, he found himself cut off from the world around him and from his own music. He wanted desperately to hear the radical compositions he was creating, and the pianos he had simply weren't up to the job. What was needed was something new, and to find it we have to come here to the National Museum in Budapest. Out of sheer frustration, Beethoven would thump his Viennese piano so hard that the strings would snap and the hammers would splinter. And then, in 1817, this showed up. It was a state-of-the-art machine, a gift made by John Broadwood and Sons. They had it sent by boat from London to Trieste and then on a wagon to Beethoven's home in Vienna. And overnight, this piano changed his musical universe. wanted to see this piano for years because for me this is the big bang moment for the keyboard it's on this piano this broadwood that Beethoven writes newly explosive percussive dynamic passionate music this is the birth of the modern piano Today's modern piano is a triumph of craftsmanship and engineering. With its strong metal frame and complex action comprising 12,000 parts, it can take up to a year to build. And after all that work, here is the finished item, a 21st century concert grand ready for action. Hoping to show us what he can do with it, it's the third of our Leeds finalists. Let's meet him now. It's Jason Gillam. Like many Australians, Jason's parents hail from the north of England, so for him, competing at the Leeds is a little like performing in front of a home crowd. You are Australian, but you've got dual British citizenship, so you are essentially our only your British only finalist. <laughs> yes. You are our great big hope. Please tell us you're going to do it. <laughs> well, I will try. I did consider playing for Team GB, <laughs> but I thought my, my Aussie friends and family would kill me. <laughs> You're going to be playing Beethoven's Fifth Concerto, The Emperor. Why did you choose the piece? Well, The Emperor is one of my very favourite pieces to begin with. I think that's very important in a competition to choose something that you really love. And it has the whole kind of gamut of different emotions and styles. And, and of course, I like the Beethoven's kind of rhythmic drive and energy. It's very positive 
uh, open kind of piece which suits my style of playing. You've done some work with Mark Elder on the concerto. What did you and he discuss? What kind of insights did he share with you? He explained about his concept of the sound that he wanted the orchestra to produce and that they've worked on. The, the strings are in piano. And I stay quite loud and then come down. Yeah, so I get the bassoon to, to make much it's of like that. It's like the opposite of the fourth concerto slow yeah. movement. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Eventually you behave. Yeah. <laughs> He seems very centred as a musician. He makes a very strong, firm sound, different from all the others. He plays Beethoven in a very open, honest, secure way, with a sort of glow. You do have to really ramp it up now, don't you? Because this is the final, so it's a different kind of concentration that you need. I find it more enjoyable somehow because the, the, it's like I have friends on stage with me, helping me along the way, so I'm just going to go on stage and enjoy it. Everybody we've spoken to says they don't care about winning this competition. <laughs> Nobody goes into a competition not to win it, surely. It's true, yeah. Of course you go in to win it and if you don't win it, you give them a run for their money. <laughs> Beethoven's fifth piano concerto has always been known as the Emperor, but no one seems quite sure of why. In any case, the title completely conveys in three little syllables what you're about to hear. This is a piece of scale and majesty. It's also, frankly, a little bit macho. There is an awful lot of musical muscle flexing going on here, but that's Beethoven all over. The big idea of the piece is this, and it starts in the violins. It's a catchy tune, but more importantly, it has this incredible rhythmic energy. You can just feel the punch of that music, that tiny germinal idea that drives things on. Beethoven wrote this barnstorming concerto as Napoleon was about to invade his hometown of Vienna. And it's easy to hear this as a piece about politics and power. It's the soloist as a lone voice against the orchestra overcoming it. Beethoven is asking us a question. Can the heroism and nobility of a single person, or even a single idea, change our world for the better? That is the challenge of his Emperor Concerto. So, how are rehearsals going for tonight's performance of the Emperor? Let's find out now from our resident experts, the pianists Noriko Ogawa and Tom Poster. Tom, is Jason the man for you? Can he pull off the Emperor Concerto? Well, I'm very excited by what I've heard in the rehearsal. It's really, uh, his tone was really projecting to the back of the hall. You know, we're, we're sort of sitting back here listening and, and he really, um, in a way entirely appropriate for Beethoven, uh, had the power in the climaxes. You know, it's not Fortissimo's that you would play in Prokofiev or Rachmaninoff, but it's uh, Beethoven Fortissimo. It's a sort of muscular sound without being forced or, or overpowered. Yes, he's not too pumped up, but also I think he's an incredibly beautiful lyrical pianist. I don't know what you made of the rehearsal. Noriko. Really, really nice, yes. Um, well, this concerto is the brightest and the most gorgeous Beethoven concerto of, of those five, and uh, I think he's conveying everything that we need. Uh, and then also, I have to make a remark that the, the orchestra and St. Mark, they are just so kind to this young pianist because they spent really quite a lot of time mm. and getting mm. every detail right. But it is very much chamber music, this piece, and although, of course, we think most immediately of the, the heroic and, and the virtuous elements of the work. Actually, a huge amount of this piece takes place within piano and within pianissimo, which I think are just as, if not more, compelling than, than the grand virtuosity of the outset. Well, interestingly, we have two Emperor Concertos yes. uh, this year. How do you put across a performance that has the right kind of character? How do you do a winning performance of the Emperor? In a way, you know, having played all the Beethoven concertos, in some ways this is the most straightforward in that it just sort of sweeps you along and carries you through. Um, so it, it's a wonderful work to be, be part of, really. Great. Well, we'll talk more after the performance. Thanks.
scores of Leeds finalists have taken this stage before him. Now, Jason Gillam prepares to give the performance of his life. And waiting to make their judgment, 13 celebrated musical minds. Let's meet the Leeds jury. The overall standards of technical perfection are so dizzying. That kind of prowess alone does not suffice to anoint a prize winner. You're looking for something unique, somebody with imagination, somebody with flair, somebody with a stage personality. The great ability to communicate that touch of magic, something individual. That's what I'm looking for, an experience, a journey, a dream, uh, somebody who has a language, somebody who says things differently. I'm there to feel music, to look for somebody who will touch me very strongly. What I'm looking for is someone that I would want to travel 100 miles to hear again. You can hear the most regularly played piece of the repertoire and they make it sound new. And you think, okay, this is somebody special. Well, pieces don't come more regularly played than Beethoven's Emperor Concerto. Here to perform it now, Jason Gillam in this final of the Leeds International Piano Competition. He's joined by Sir Mark Elder and the Halle, led by Lynn Fletcher.
Jason Gillum performing Beethoven's Concerto No. 5, The Emperor, at the 2012 Leeds International Piano Competition with Halle Orchestra, conducted by Sir Mark Elder. Jason leading Mark off stage. He looks delighted, perhaps a little bit relieved, with his performance in this concerto final. I enjoyed it, yeah. Yeah, I've, been, I've enjoyed the whole competition, really. <laughs> I've enjoyed the playing days more than the off days, yeah, which is amazing. That's what you're here to do. <laughs> no, I thought you played beautifully. Oh. Lovely sound. Oh. Always a lovely sound. Thank Gorgeous. you. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>the hall emptying out now after Jason Gillam's performance of Beethoven's Emperor Concerto. Listening with me this evening, Noriko Ogawa and Tom Foster. Tom, we said before we heard his performance that this is the big muscle piece, this is the big heroic piece of Beethoven. Did he give us heroic Beethoven this evening? Yes, he really did. Um, it was a performance I enjoyed hugely. One thing that really struck me was how compelling his sound was. It was a sound that immediately reached out at the cantabile quality and it really penetrated the back of the hall in a, in a wonderfully heroic way. Absolutely. Well, it was a really glossy sound all the way through and everything came through. I was able to hear every note of it. He really um, showed how Beethoven fifth should sound. If I could say one thing, it, he could have been even more daring in some of the pianissimo moments, just a couple of the very icy moments in the first moment, I thought he could have dared to be even less. But, I mean, there's a tiny quibble in what was a wonderful performance. Yeah, I mean, pretty much the two of you are saying that this is the real deal, this guy is a pretty complete performer. So do you think he's in with the chance of being the winner? Well, I think Jason is really ready to go out there and start really performing professionally but I thought he had just a tiny bit of concentration snaps a couple of times. We've all been there. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much indeed to both of you. Thank you. Well we've heard from three of our finalists. We're only halfway through. Anything could still happen in this competition. Here's a taster of what we can look forward to next time in the Leeds International Piano Competition 2012. I follow our competitors into the suburbs where dozens of volunteers are hosting pianos for this year's Leeds. They come every three years and I look forward to it. And Andrew is here today giving me enormous pleasure. It's wonderful to get to know some people who live here and are supporting the competition instead of just being totally isolated. And Latvian finalist Andreas Osokin sparkles in Prokofiev's third piano concerto. Andreas is, is a brilliant pianist, and uh, he's well up to the demand. You can find out more about the BBC's piano season online at the BBC Radio 3 website. And on Monday at half past seven on BBC Radio 3, there's more piano live in concert, including Prokofiev, live from the John Innes Centre in Norwich. Don't miss it. <laughs>